welcome to a pretty different video. You see, I've always been a very big fan of Razer laptops. I've always considered them to be overall the very best gaming laptops that money can buy. Not just because of their outstanding industrial design, but also because of their incredible performance, their amazing displays, and of course, that stunning Razer Chroma RGB keyboard. Well, this is our very first video on a Razer laptop. How cool is that? Now, we have featured other Razer products on the channel before, such as the Razer Core X eGP enclosure, but not the Razer laptop. And what better way to start featuring Razer laptops than if not by featuring the highest end one that Razer makes? So, this is our very first look at the brand new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020. Likely the best gaming laptop that money can buy. So, get our snacks ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy, well, the most unique gaming laptop that I've ever laid my hands on. Okay, so design-wise, the new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020 looks pretty much identical to the 2019 model before it. So the 2020 iteration is a spec bump rather than a complete redesign. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's because the Razer Blade Pro 17 has one of the most premium designs that I have ever seen on a laptop. It's made entirely out of machined metal with an anodized finish that gives it this dark gray or even black look. It is very sturdy, it feels like a tank, and just by using this for the first few minutes, I could immediately tell how insanely high quality the experience of this laptop was going to be, just by judging by the extraordinary build quality. In a way, it reminds me of using a MacBook Pro, because they both have that machine's unibody enclosure, the only difference being that the Razer Blade Pro 17 is much larger, as it has a 17-inch uh, display. And it is also thicker and heavier than a MacBook Pro, but you'll see why all that is when we get to the actual performance section of this video. Razer also sent over a brand new Razer Studio, which is a beast of its own, with a full 4K OLED display. That thing is just nuts. But definitely stay tuned for a completely separate video just on that Razer Studio 15 coming, well, in just a few weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, on the back we have a Razer logo, which does light up, just like the old school MacBook, so that's pretty cool. And then on the bottom we have not one, not two, but actually three massive vents with another air outtake on the back of the hinge. And on top of that, the new Razer Blade Pro 17 also features a vapor chamber. So the cooling on this laptop is extremely well thought of, and it kind of has to be, just because of how insane the specs on this laptop are, which again, I'll cover in just a second. When it comes to the ports, on the left we have the proprietary power connector, which supports up to 230 watts of power. Pretty nuts. We then have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, which is 2.5 times faster than your usual Ethernet port, which is 1 gigabit per second. Meaning that you can get wider speeds of up to, of course, 2.5 gigabits per second, which is pretty nuts as well. We then get two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and we also have a USB Type-C port, Gen 2 as well, uh, and then a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the left, we have an SD card reader, love seeing that, and then we also have a Thunderbolt 3 port, love seeing that even more, because with this you can connect even more powerful desktop class GPUs, such as a 2080 Ti, for example, 5K monitors, and many, many more. We then have another USB Type-A port, the third one, as well as an HDMI 2.0 Type-B port, which supports 4K 60 outputs, as well as a Kensington lock. So there you go, port selection-wise, the Razer features everything you could wish for, uh, which is pretty awesome. Now, portability-wise, the Razer Blade Pro 17 is definitely not the most portable laptop out there. It's pretty massive, and it also weighs 2.75 kilograms, but at the same time, there are other 17-inch laptops out there that are basically not portable at all. They're basically just desktops. Uh, they're really heavy, just massive. You can at least put the Blade 17 in your backpack when you're traveling and take it to places. So it is portable, just not as portable as the Razer Studio 15 or the MacBook Pro 15 or 16-inch R. Now, when it comes to the actual display, the Blade Pro 17 comes with, you know, a 17-inch uh, display, of course, <laughs> which in the case of our units is a 1080p panel. Now, 1080p on a 17-inch display, yeah, it's probably not the best idea. Uh, text looks noticeably blurry, and it's just nowhere near as sharp as a Quad HD or a 4K panel. But on the upside, it is an IPS panel with 100% sRGB coverage, so the color gamut on this display is very, very good. The viewing angles are great. Overall, it's just a very good 1080p panel. Honestly, one of the best ones I've seen. But you see, what makes this display so special is the refresh rate. 
You see, on consoles, you mostly have a 30 frames per second experience, 60 in very few cases. Now, on PC, 60 frames per second is pretty much the standard, and this is what gamers, most gamers, aim for. However, for the past two years, we started seeing more and more high refresh rate monitors, mostly 144Hz panels, and in order to achieve 144 frames per second, you needed a pretty beefy GPU, something like 2080. And while this panel isn't 60Hz, or 90Hz, or even 144Hz, no. This display is actually 300Hz. 300Hz, guys meaning that this display can display up to 300 frames per second in a game. Now, that's absolutely insane. I've done a few tests where I got over 200 frames per second on this laptop, and it felt unlike anything I've seen before. Everything was so smooth and so fluid, it honestly felt, in a way, like uh, real life. So, there you go, this is why we have a 1080p panel. Because if the resolution of this display was any higher, we wouldn't have been able to hit 300 frames per second. Again, um, I was hitting about 270 frames per second, by the way, uh, max, and that was in StarCraft 2 with everything maxed out, so I got pretty close to that 300 mark, and it looked just insane. Now, if you want, if you really want, you can actually upgrade this display to a 4K panel. It won't be 300Hz or anything like that, but it will still be a 120Hz display, which will also support touch input. So it does depend on the game that you usually play. Uh, but I would personally go for that, a 4K display. 120 frames per second is more than enough. Unless you're an esports player, a sharper 4K display would make a more noticeable difference than a 1080p 300Hz panel. Now, when it comes to the keyboard and the trackpad, well, the trackpad is absolutely brilliant. It is made entirely out of glass, and there are no other buttons on it. It is just a single piece. It is definitely one of the best trackpads I've ever experienced on a Windows laptop with full multi-touch gestures. It is not quite as good as on a MacBook, but that's mostly due to how well the trackpad is optimized in macOS versus Windows. Overall, still a very similar experience to a Mac and one of the best trackpads on a Windows laptop. The keyboard, on the other hand, is, well, interesting. So I found the typing experience to be quite, uh, I don't want to say bad, but let's just say that it was making, I was making more mistakes on that keyboard than uh, I was on my horrible MacBook Pro butterfly keyboard, so there's that. Now, most of this was just me not being used to that keyboard, but then at the same time, I've actually used loads of different laptops in the meantime, um, and this was uh, the one that was the most difficult to type on, by the way. And I gotta say, the layout of the whole keyboard is, is just a bit strange. So the left shift key is quite narrow on European models, even when compared to other laptops. And then the arrow keys are similar to the ones found on the MacBook Pros with that butterfly keyboard, rather than the usual T-shaped style. But it was mostly the typing experience that felt, I don't know, just, just odd. Something about the keys didn't feel right to me. I don't know, maybe that's just me. However, what definitely blew me away in terms of the keyboard was the uh, RGB functionality, the Razer Chroma functionality. So every Razer laptop, by the way, comes with the built-in Razer Synapse app from which you can actually adjust the backlight of some of the keys, or all the keys, or any keys to be honest, even individually, in pretty much any way that you can imagine. You can have a certain key light up in a specific way when you press it, and really have a bunch of different styles and effects to just immerse you into the gaming experience. The RGB lighting just makes this one of the most unique laptops that I've ever, ever seen. And for those of you who think that RGB is a gimmick, it might be. But it's so freaking cool, like, you cannot argue with that. Now, the next important thing in a laptop, for me at least, aside from the design, the display, and the keyboard and trackpad, are the speakers, the microphones, and of course, the front-facing camera. So the Razer Blade Pro 17 comes with a 720p camera. Uh, this is how it compares against my 2019 Mac Pro 15-inch, for example, and this is versus the Dell XPS 13-inch 2-in-1. Okay, so this is a front-facing camera test and a microphone test, on the new Razer Blade 17-inch 2020. And now this is a front-facing camera test and a microphone test of the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro. And finally, this is a front-facing camera test and a microphone test of the brand new Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 late 2019. The good news here is that we also get Windows Hello with this camera, meaning that we can log into Windows by just using our face, which is pretty nice. In terms of the speakers, they do sound good, but again, here's a comparison against my MacBook Pro 15 inch 2019 as well as the Razer Studio. Right, 
So now let's talk about the reason why you'll want to buy this laptop in the first place, and that is of course the performance. So the new 2020 Razer Blade Pro 17 comes with the new Intel 10 generation i7-10875 processor, which is an 8-core CPU with a turbo boost of up to 5.1 GHz, making the Razer Blade Pro 17 one of the very first laptops to come with an Intel 10 generation H-series processor. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. GPU-wise, our unit comes with a brand new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super Max-Q with 4GB of dedicated video memory. We also get 16GB of DDR4 memory at 2933MHz, which is also upgradable to 64GB if you choose to do so, as well as a 512GB PCIe flash storage combined with a free M.2 slot. Free as in it's not used. So you can actually install your very own M.2 flash module inside of that, if you choose to do so. Now on paper that sounds pretty amazing, so how does all of this translate to some real world usage? Well, in uh, Doom Eternal, with everything maxed out to the teeth, we were getting an average of 240 frames per second. Yes, 240 frames per second, and keep in mind that this is a flagship 2020 game that literally just came out. So imagine what frame rates you would get in older titles. Well, you don't have to imagine because we got you covered. So, for example, in StarCraft 2, a game that I've never been able to play fully maxed out on any laptop before, the Razer Blade Pro 17 can indeed play it fully maxed out, and at an average frame rate of 270 frames per second. Overwatch runs at 200 frames per second as the average with everything maxed out. Fortnite runs at 120 frames per second with everything maxed out. I don't know, I was expecting to see even better performance in Fortnite here. And then finally, in Modern Warfare, more specifically in Modern Warfare Warzone, I was getting around 130 frames per second with everything maxed out aside from ray tracing, and then when I enabled ray tracing, I was getting around 120. So that's pretty insane. Um, a very, very slight drop in frame rate when, uh, when turning on ray tracing, which I didn't expect to see. Now, as a disclaimer, I did those tests about three weeks ago on an unreleased Razer Blade Pro 17. So the drivers weren't even up to date. In fact, I was even getting errors in some games, like uh, in uh, Doom, for example, that the drivers were unsupported. I could still run the game. And I was still getting that insane 120 to 270 frames per second in pretty much all the games that I tested. So once the drivers do get updated, expect even higher numbers in terms of performance. Temperatures wise, I haven't seen this laptop exceed 75 degrees, which is very good. Uh, it's just that if you want to do any intensive tasks, you need to have it plugged in. Otherwise, when it's on battery mode, you'll only get less than half of the performance that you would normally get when the laptop is plugged in. Speaking of plugged in, huge thanks to Battery Life for sponsoring this video. Not an actual sponsor, it's just a Battery Life section, but anyways, um, I didn't really get to try the Battery Life that much, uh, because my usage, my, my time with this machine was pretty limited, uh, so I've actually mostly used it plugged in. Now, we do have a pretty massive 70.5 watt hour battery, which is fairly decent size-wise, but the MacBook Pro 16, for example, which has a much smaller body, that one comes with a much larger 100 watt hour battery. Now, when the Blade Pro 17 was not plugged in, it would honestly discharge basically overnight. So yeah, standby time wasn't great. But do keep in mind that this was a pre-release unit and not a final retail unit. But considering that you do need to have it plugged in in order to achieve peak performance, I wouldn't expect a great battery life out of this, especially when you're gaming. And finally, when it comes to the value, is the new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020 worth it? Well, at a starting price of $2,500 or 2,900 euros, which can actually go up to $4,200 or 3,800 euros, the Razer Blade Pro 17 is one of the most expensive laptops that you can buy. So yeah, that's pretty expensive. I mean, I can build a PC, a proper gaming PC, or even a few, with the price, the amounts that, you know, this laptop costs. But at the same time, can you fit a PC in a backpack? Well, unless you have a gigantic backpack, but, you know, portability is expensive. However, you do get an outstanding level of performance, with the ability to play pretty much any game in well over 100 frames per second, sometimes even close to that 300 frames per second mark. And of course that if you're not a gamer and you're into content creation and 3D modeling, the Blade Pro is still incredibly powerful for that as well. So there's really not much to complain about the new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020. That's a long name, <laughs> aside from the name. And really my only wish, uh, I wouldn't really call this a complaint, but my only wish for the next Razer Blade, Razer, please do implement this, uh, would be to feature a quad HD display at maybe uh, 144 hertz. Just because 4K is honestly such an overkill on such a small 14-inch panel. 
and you won't be able to reach 4K 120 by the way, so that's not achievable, but you'll definitely be able to achieve 144 frames per second on a Quad HD panel, and overall that would be a much better experience. But yeah, there we go, if you want to consider buying one, a new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020, then definitely consider using the Amazon links below. There are affiliate links, which means that we also get a commission from all the sales that uh, Amazon makes. So you don't have to pay anything, Amazon gives us a commission from their very big pool, which by the way, that commission was cut in half. So thank you, Amazon, that helps. This is Scribe Notifications. If you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one, hopefully was, and let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about the new Razer Blade Pro 17 2020? I always have to think really hard when I'm mentioning that name because I don't want to mess it up. Anyways, what do you guys think about this laptop? Do you think overall that it's worth paying that much to have this insane performance in a portable package? Or, um, you know, is it better to just build a PC? Let me know in the comments about what you guys think about this. And yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, that's it.